Hello my friends, the chosen fans, the chosen fans and not only, but obviously especially you the chosen fans, because this video, if you love the chosen, you will uh, appreciate it more. Why am I saying this? Again, I'm doing a video with Jonathan Rumi. Well, uh, I couldn't help it. I've seen uh, something so beautiful, something that uh, really made me laugh. And not only, and I, I learned a lot of things. I'm not even a Catholic. I'm not into any denomination. I follow Jesus, and period. But uh, I discovered someone so special, Bishop Barron. Bishop Barron happens to be Catholic. And he explained so beautifully the nature of Christ. He helped me a lot to understand the nature of Christ. You're gonna see. I have this video here. The longer video is on the channel of uh, Bishop Barron. I highly recommend you to see this complete video, a conversation between Bishop Barron and Jonathan Rumi. Please, by all means, see all one hour, more than one hour. But these four minutes, and there are some other parts, hilarious, uh, extremely hilarious and beautiful. I could, uh, I'm not sure, maybe I will post that here as well. But for now, I'm going to show to you extremely hilarious reaction of Jonathan Rumi as Bishop Barron explains about uh, what would be the best for an actor, for Jonathan to do, to give an uh, accurate portrayal of Jesus. You will see. You will see, prepare yourself to learn a lot from uh, Bishop Barron, God bless him, and may God give him long life. He's a brilliant theologian, and uh, you'll learn a lot from him, and then you'll be uh, entertained. <laughs> you'll laugh with uh, our sweet, charming, uh, cheeky Jonathan Rubin. So, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pause this music again. Uh, Make a little shout out to David Lastra. I'm using his music always. And we're gonna watch together Jonathan and uh, Bishop Barron. So let's pause the music. That's it. No more music for now. And now let's see this four minutes conversation. <laughs> it's actually an explanation of. Uh, Bishop Barron about Christ and what Jonathan should do uh, just to be a more accurate Jesus. And uh, Jonathan listening. And then you will see his extremely hilarious reaction to all those uh, explanations. Three, two, one, go. You say would be the particular challenges of of playing Jesus, what 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 would you what would you say to every actor uh, that they need to be concerned about? I want to hear this in trying to do the role justice and, and in trying to be theologically on point. I mean, it's a big challenge. What what would you tell actors? Please help. <laughs> yeah. No, we we actually have spoken a few times. Yeah. You would call me and say we're preparing for the scene, and what yeah. would you do? I mean, here, here the central challenge. You know this, of course, is Jesus, true God and true man. Uh, how do you present both of those? So, you know, you look at the range of, of movies and shows about Jesus, it's easy enough to do one or the other in a way. You know, Jesus, truly human, this human figure like a great saint. Okay, fair enough, easy enough, but not adequate to it. Or on the other extreme, Jesus is simply this divine figure who's kind of wearing a human suit, you know, it's just under the, the veneer of humanity. And these sort of purely ethereal Jesus. Um, those are both problematic. And if I put my theologian's hat on for a second, this is very old stuff in our tradition. We fought for centuries about Christology. You know, if, if you worry that, boy, we're fighting in the church today about a lot of things, well, welcome to the Catholic Church. We've been, we've been fighting about serious things for a long time. In the early centuries, it was Christology. And if I can just lay it out schematically, on the extreme left in the ancient church, you had Nestorianism, right? The view that Jesus basically is a super saint. He's a human being with a really powerful relationship to God that we would aspire to. That's Nestorianism. On the extreme right in the ancient church would be monophysitism, the view that there's one physis or one nature, that he's all divine and human in kind of a very you know, negligible sense. So those are the two extremes. Well, then there was a third heresy that tried to split the difference. It's called Arianism. So Arianism would say he's 
quasi-divine and quasi-human. Now, mind you, in the ancient world, that'd be a bit like the mythological framework, like Achilles or Hercules, semi-demigod, demi-human, right? Well, here's the interesting thing, I think, is the church said no, no, and no. It said no to extreme left-wing Nestorianism, no to extreme right-wing monophysitism, and no to the compromise of Arianism. What it gave us was the Council of Chalcedon, one of the most important statements, 451 AD, one of the most important statements of our Christological faith, that in Jesus you have two natures, divine and human, that come together in the unity of a divine person. Now, mind you, person here, and this is, this is important for acting, actually. I didn't bring my notebook. <laughs> Dang. Was, when Chalcedon uses the word person, it's not speaking in a psychological uh, modality. So we say, oh, what a nice person he is. What a nice personality she has. That's not what they mean. Person is an instance of a nature in metaphysics. What they're saying is very interesting, that there's one divine person that instantiates simultaneously two natures, divine and human, which come together, this is again the Council of Chalcedon, come together without mixing, mingling, or confusion meaning he's not a demigod, not semi-human, not a mixture of the two, but fully divine, fully human, in a non-competitive sense, in the unity of one person. Okay, that's metaphysics. Now, the trick is, how do you translate that into acting, where you say, I... I... <laughs> Luckily, there is no quiz after this. Yeah. But here's the good news. He's actually doing it. That, that's what's <laughs> remarkable. Glory to God. That was the video. I know you liked it. I just love it. And I listened with so much uh, intensity to what uh, Bishop Barron was explaining. And uh, I really learned a lot from him. <laughs> and uh, but as usual, Jonathan is hilarious and people love him. At uh, that gathering, there were a, a good crowd. There was a good crowd there cheering Jonathan and enjoying listening to him. Uh, they're blessed that they've seen uh, so much uh, of a good quality conversation. Humor, Charles Spurgeon used to say, I don't know if you know Charles Spurgeon, uh, theologian as well, a preacher, a Protestant this time in England, in the 19th century, he said that humor is uh, the same like, uh, imagine a very crowded room <laughs> during summer, <sighs> heat, uh, just imagine there is no air conditioning. At that time, there was no air conditioning, is in the 19th century. So. Imagine that room and a breeze of beautiful, fresh air coming in. That's exactly what the humor is. And Jonathan is using this humor uh, every single time he has the occasion. He is so appealing as a human being. I even forgot about the music. <laughs> Let's put it back a little bit. God bless Jonathan Rumi. May God keep him healthy and strong. May God work in his life more and more so he will become more and more like Jesus and less like himself. And this prayer goes, friends, every single one of us, every one of us in the end. That's what we want, isn't it? Christ to grow in us and us to become smaller and smaller. May God help you, my friend, my brother, my sister, that you become like this and I become like this. Let Jesus be everything and let us be less and less. See you soon and thank you again for watching. If you want to support this channel, you can by smacking that subscribe button and sharing this video. See you soon.